Philippines Council of Advisory of Bad News and Utility to the LGPN. The regulations were laid on the 10th of March, which was the latest possible date to allow them to take effect on the 1st of April. The key provisions are listed under 2.1 of the report and serve to protect the crew benefits under the former regulations and when members can draw on reduced benefits. The Secretary of State guidance was only issued on the 1st of April which gave a short time frame to understand the policy intent and to update training materials to staff and employers. As the regs and guidance were published after the system provided a closed development window, there are major gaps in the software and a significant amount of manual calculations required, with cases now taking a lot longer to process. As a result, we have failed to achieve performance levels in paying retirement benefits in the first quarter of this financial year. Our target is to pay 96% of cases within seven days, but this fell to 82% over the period. Those that missed the target were paid eight days late. While some issues have been addressed by the system supplier, the fix of the software is not expected until late summer. Although I, although I expect improvements in July performance are staff to become more adept with the new provisions and the manual workarounds. During the next few months, officers will be assessing the impact of the new scheme provisions on caseway volume to inform the restructure of the admin section. Section 2.9 covers the outstanding consultations needed to complete the framework for the new scheme design. Since the time of writing, the consultation on the proposed governance changes was issued on the 23rd of June. This will run for eight weeks and will close on the 15th of August. The new governance arrangement will be covered at the Governance and Risk Working Party, following which a response will be chaired to the chair before submitting to DCLG. 2.10 to 13 covers advice sourced by LGA from Nigel Gisson QC on fiduciary duties with regard to investments of LGPS funds. This related to whether an LGS admin authority owes a fiduciary duty and how the objectors of the admin authority should influence the discharge of its LGPS investment duties. The conclusion provided were that the admin authority has both fiduciary and public law duties and the primary, primary purpose is to maximise investment return, balancing risk and return in a normal way, and that the choice of investments may be influenced by environmental and social governance considerations, so long as that does not risk material financial detriment to the funds. In addition, the admin authority may not adapt its own particular interests to those of the scheme employers. The main risk Section 3 of the report relates to the system gaps and the increased risk of miscalculation of pension entitlements, which is mitigated by additional quality assurance work for integral details. Members are recommended, members are recommended that they make the report. Thank you, Chair. Happy to take any questions.
now we're moving to a situation where the, we're not only looking at fiduciary duty in terms of where we invest. Um, and we know that over the years, there have been issues with pension boards in terms of our investments in, in portfolios and vehicles that have had been in our Does that indicating to me that there's more flexibility now and that we can take a different approach? So could the officers say something about that for you and whether we can now look at um, withdrawing from investments um, on the basis that there may be an ethical dimension to them rather than having to always look at how we make the best possible return for the fund? Okay, thank you.
the um, suggestion is based on the fact that looking at every LGPS fund over 10 years, they've achieved about market performance. So the argument is you might as well just invest in the market. I think our view would be that clearly there are some funds that have done better than the market and some funds that have done worse than the market. And it's more sensible to look at what the good funds have done and bring the worst funds up to what the good funds have done rather than, in a sense, dragging the good funds down, down to the average. So you can see we're thinking about the response that we're formulating and uh, we'll, we'll pull that together with more information. And uh, one last call. Okay, any questions on that report? So there is a recommendation for this report that um, uh, responses put together and uh, consulted with himself. So if we're happy with that recommendation, yeah. as is written out.
different published documents outlining best practice for the contents of the annual report of LGPS funds and within the financial management report include three-year budgets. Approval is sought for amendments to include the three-year budget in this year's annual report, although annual budgets will still be brought to pensions committee for approval. Section 7 of, the, of this report explains the costs of the pension funds are charged directly to the pension fund and are then ultimately funded by investment income and employee and employer contributions. This report recommends that members approve the finalised budget for 2014-15, approve the inclusion of the three-year estimates in the 2013-14 annual report and members note the outset of 13-14. The approval of the budget forms part of the government's arrangement
so what that's saying is that each year we've outperformed by 0.8 percent over the last last five years. So the returns are quite surprising. Over the last five years, the fund has returned 12.3 percent each year on average. The benchmark returns is less than 5 percent on average. Um, hence, the, the relative outperformance clearly. Thank you. 